let us study now let us totally concentrate on how to balance the chemical equations after studying the meaning of formula units in a chemical equation now let us start focusing on how to balance a chemical equation when you go to balancing of chemical equation when you go for balancing of chemical equation as already i told you a chemical equation is made up of reactants reactants and products the reactants are made up of reactant molecules and the products are made up of product molecules let us study the balancing of chemical equation through one simple example that is we can take h2 gas first example h2 gas reacts with oxygen gas undergoes a chemical change to give one molecule of water liquid what is interesting here is the reactants are hydrogen gas molecules and oxygen gas molecules they undergo chemical change and they give rise to the new product formation that is water molecules as products so when you are balancing a chemical equation you should focus on the various types of atoms on the reactant side and the various types of atoms on the product side that is in the reactant side types of atoms and the products are also types and number atoms here also types and number of atoms okay second thing is we have to concentrate after identifying the types and number of atoms or molecules in the reactants and product side then you should concentrate on the adjustment of molar coefficients molar coefficients molar coefficients on the reactant side and molar coefficients on the product side molar coefficients on the product side if you go for the molar coefficients on the reactant side and the molar coefficients on product side now when you are balancing the chemical equation first you have to use little bit of common sense always the better method of whether it is a simple chemical equation or a complex chemical equation the best and the simple method is always to apply hit and trial method always use the method called hit and trial method what do you exactly mean by hit and trial method hit and trial method is simply the adjustments of the molar coefficients of the reactant molecules and the product molecules by checking the status of the number of atoms or molecules on the reactant side and number of atoms and molecules on the product side now if you go to this reaction you are finding that in the reactant side we have one hydrogen molecule and we have one oxygen molecule in the product side we have one water molecule in the reactant side we have two hydrogen atoms h2 two hydrogen atoms in the product side we have two hydrogen atoms in the reactant side we have two oxygen atoms and in the product side we have one oxygen atom so first thing is because already hydrogens are balanced number of hydrogen atoms are balanced on the reactant side and product side that but the number of oxygens are not balanced because here we have one oxygen and here we have two oxygens that's why if i place a molar coefficients if i place a molar coefficient besides water that is 2 here 2 is the molar coefficient the underlined the underlined numerical the underlined number 2 is the molar coefficient for the product side that that means you have to understand this as 2 moles of water in this 2 moles of water 2 to the 4 hydrogens and we have 2 2 to the 4 hydrogen atoms and we have 2 oxygen atom this molar coefficient should be multiplied with the number of hydrogen atoms and the molar coefficient should be multiplied with the number of oxygen atoms here we have one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms in water molecule so two to the four hydrogens and two oxygens so therefore come back to the reactant side you can find that by placing two as a molar coefficient besides water you are able to balance the number of oxygens in the reactant side but you are not able to balance the number of hydrogens in the reactant side in the product side we have four hydrogens but in the reactant side we have only two hydrogens that's why 
you place one more molar coefficient on the reactant side that is 2 by placing 2 here 2 to the 4 hydrogens and here also 2 to the 4 hydrogens we have 2 oxygens and here also we have 2 oxygens hence the reaction is balanced. So, this reaction this is a simple reaction where this is a simple chemical equation where we are able to understand the balancing of reaction. Suppose you take you take second example that is example 2. This is actually if you take a metal zinc solid zinc solid reacts with HCl hydrochloric acid aqueous solution ok aqueous and this is concentrated concentrated gives rise to the product side you get zinc chloride solid plus H2 gas H2 gas. Now, what we have to understand here is this is nothing but what kind of reaction is this? This reaction comes under this reaction comes under chemical displacement. Chemical displacement always in always involves the formation of a solid, insoluble salt, salt and the evolution of gas or the liberation of gas. So, what is happening here? Again, the same procedure whatever you have adopted for the first chemical reaction, you should also adopt for the second chemical reaction. That is, one atom of zinc in the solid state is there in the reactant side, and again, one atom of zinc in the product side. You have two chlorines and two hydrogens on the product side, but you have one chlorine and one hydrogen on the reactant side. That is why, if you place two as a molar coefficient on the reactant side, we can find that. That means, now if you read the entire chemical reaction, you can say that one mole of zinc solid reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid to produce one mole of zinc chloride solid plus one mole of hydrogen gas. That means, if you count the number of atoms on the reactant side and the product side, the reaction is going to become balanced. How is it so? One atom of zinc, one atom of zinc, two hydrogens and two chlorines, two chlorines and two hydrogens. 2 chlorines because one molecule of chlorine is there along with the zinc and one molecule of hydrogen is there in the form of gas. Molecule of hydrogen in the form of gas contains 2 hydrogen atoms and in the zinc chloride we have 2 chlorines. So, therefore, here we can say that the entire chemical equation is balanced. So, we will go with one more example for balancing of chemical equation. Example 3, this is called combustion of hydrocarbons. The word combustion here means okay, passing of oxygen gas hydrocarbons are organic compounds. If you go for organic compounds you can take any any organic compound any hydrocarbon in the form of organic compound can be it is it can be an alkane it can be it can be an ethene gas or it can be acetylene gas it can be an acetylene gas or sometimes you can take the higher these two this is an alkane this is an alkane this is alkene and this is alkyne you take any hydrocarbon in the form of organic compound and you can balance the equation suppose for example in this example 3 I am taking say I am taking uh, methane gas plus oxygen gas gives rise to carbon dioxide gas plus H2O liquid. What you are noticing here in the combustion reaction any organic compound when it is subjected to combustion by passing oxygen gas definitely in the combustion reaction the hydrocarbon has to give carbon dioxide and water and it also releases some amount of energy. Immediately what you do you have to balance the chemical equation. When you are balancing the chemical equation again you can use the same hit and trial method. So, when you are trying to apply the hit and trial method one carbon one carbon four hydrogens on the reactant side we have two hydrogens on the product side 
so immediately you place two as a molar coefficient on the product side thereby you are finding that there are two oxygens and two oxygens total four oxygen atoms are there in the product side so therefore come back to the reactant side and check the status here we have only two oxygen atoms in the form of one oxygen molecule that is why you place a molar coefficient that is two therefore the entire reaction gets balanced the simple method here we are what we are applying is again heat and trial method in the heat and trial method we are checking the number of atoms on the reactant side and number of atoms on the product side wherever the number of atoms are less that side or on the opposite side we are trying to adjust with the suitable molar coefficient and with the help of the adjustment of molar coefficients on the reactant side and product side we are able to successfully balance the chemical equation suppose if you are taking little bit of higher complex compound this is methane suppose if i am taking c3h8 gas that is propane again same method cuz subjected to combustion add oxygen we get here that is oxygen gas it gives carbon dioxide gas plus water liquid water liquid plus energy liquid plus energy it's an exothermic reaction combustion reaction is always an exothermic reaction so here again use the same method you can balance the given chemical equation systematically either you go for the reactant side or you go for the product side you keep concentrating on the reactant side or you keep concentrating on the product side if you concentrate on the reactant side identify all the different types of atoms and keep it in your mind in the reactant side in propane propane molecular formula c3h8 you have three carbons and eight hydrogens immediately go to the product side make a comparison here there are three carbons here we have only one carbon immediately you place three as a molar coefficient besides carbon dioxide and number of carbons right now at the moment number of carbons are balanced but you go and check the number of hydrogens on the reactant side you have eight hydrogens on the reactant side but however if you go to the product side you have only two hydrogens so i think if you are going to place four as a molar coefficient because four twos are eight four is a molar coefficient four twos are eight hydrogens number of hydrogens are balanced number of carbons are balanced and number of hydrogens are balanced on the reactant side and product side now you balance the number of oxygens here four oxygens and here we have six oxygens three twos are six oxygens in carbon dioxide and four oxygens in water molecules six plus four ten oxygen atoms are there in the product side altogether so here we have only two oxygens then use your common sense that is by placing phi as a molar coefficient the reaction is getting balanced so this is a combustion reaction now we'll go for one more different type of balancing of chemical equation that is here if you go for neutralization reactions if you go for neutralization reactions what is a neutralization reaction an acid reacts with the base to form salt and water acid reacts with the base to form salt and water plus release of amount of energy is called neutralization reaction so here in this neutralization reaction suppose if you are taking hcl is an acid it's a strong acid reacts with the reacts with barium hydroxide barium hydroxide okay aqueous so base strong base all neutralization reactions are reversible reactions so you get ba cl2 solid plus h2o liquid plus energy so you balance the equation again in this neutralization in this neutralization reaction you balance the equation we have one hydrogen and one chlorine we have two hydrogens and two chlorines two hydrogens two chlorines one hydrogen one hydrogen and one chlorine so you just take the necessary appropriate okay molar coefficient that is 2 by placing two besides the hydrochloric acid you have two hydrogens and two hydrogens two hydrogen atoms plus two hydrogen atoms total four hydrogen atoms and two oxygens we have only two hydrogens and one oxygen so take two here 
the number of hydrogens are balanced two to the four hydrogens number of hydrogens are balanced two oxygens two into oxygen two oxygens are balanced here we have two oxygens balanced one barium one barium two hydrogen atoms plus two hydrogen atoms yes balanced two to the four hydrogens balanced we have two chlorines and here also we have two chlorines the entire reaction is balanced